The search for the best note-taking app has probably been a topic that you've come across at least once in your academic career. Maybe you've tried out OneNote, Notability, or Evernote to see what works best for you. My name is Danny Klani. I'm a first-year medical student and I tried the unthinkable. I used Anki as my go-to note-taking app for two months and I'm going to tell you exactly what I learned. Starting off in my first course in medical school, I knew that I was going to be tasked with more information than I had ever faced before. With my first course being on hematology and gastroenterology, which is colloquially known as the blood and guts course. What prompted me to do this was that I had heard of the classmate of a fellow medic YouTuber named Ali Abdal, who had used Anki exclusively for note taking throughout his entire medical school career and scored the top of his class consistently. This gave me high hopes for the use of Anki as a standalone note taking system. My lectures are all online and pre recorded, which is lucky for me because my 110 words per minute typing speed is not going to be able to keep up with making flashcards during a lecture. Instead, I'm going to be pausing and rewinding lectures to try and keep up. Going into doing this, I had a good amount of experience with Anki, having used it during my undergraduate degree as well as my studying for the MCAT. Getting comfortable with how to make Anki flashcards is almost a prerequisite to doing this because of the amount of time that it takes to learn and experiment with the formatting of flashcards that works best for your learning. Over time, I've refined the way that I make Anki flashcards with the use of closed deletions as well as two main formats. One of the card formats that I use is a card that tests a single concept using a closed deletion. This card is ideal when possible in medicine, but usually isn't going to be a possibility. One example of this is the question, why does blood turn black in the process of transiting from the upper GI tract? And the answer to this is because of the intestinal bacteria which convert hemoglobin into a different molecule. The second type of card is a list of items. These are the kinds that I dread the most yet recognize that they're an inevitable part of learning medicine. A good example of this is what is the triad of signs to look for when you're suspecting hemolysis? And the answer to this is jaundice, anemia, and splenomegaly. Now I'm going to tell you about my experience during the first couple weeks of lectures trying out this strategy. I want to be clear and tell you that I spent way more time than I anticipated on each lecture during those first couple of weeks. I would often spend my days from 6 a.m. in the morning until 9 p.m. in the evening working on these lectures and making the flashcards for them because of the amount of times that I needed to pause, rewind, and try and get that point that the lecturer was making. Quite clearly, I had very little time to keep up with actually doing the cards that I was making. In retrospect, my approach to making these flashcards was quite naive. Considering that in the past, I had made flashcards by first going through a lecture and making notes on it, and then converting the relevant points into flashcards, I had failed to consider that I needed to filter the information coming in before putting it into a flashcard. I eventually figured out that the reason why my flashcards were taking so damn long was because that I was waiting on every word of the lecturer to put on the flashcard. Oh, listen, there's one other thing I wanted to ask you about. I quite frankly obsessed over the idea that my patient may present with X, Y, or Z condition, and that if I didn't know every detail of these conditions, that my patients would inevitably suffer. When I started to think about the bigger picture of medical training, I realized that my worry over these details was unnecessary. Medical school is just the beginning of the lifelong learning process that we call medicine. In medical school, you're expected to pick up the basics and get a framework for building a diagnosis. Then in residency, your training continues and sometimes narrows, allowing you to build on the scaffold that was created in medical school. Throughout your journey, you won't often be alone or unable to research a condition that you haven't seen in years. You'll have more seasoned physicians and resources like up to date, other products are available, that you could refer to. The short story here is that I realized that my job as a medical student was not to learn every intricacy of every disease, but rather to develop a framework that I could continue to build upon with future learning. Moving into my second month of using Anki, I was able to get my cards finished in a much more timely manner at this point. I wasn't usually finishing my lectures early, but I started to realize what was worth paying attention to and what could be left out. It also left me with extra time in the day to either go to the gym or catch up with friends that I hadn't kept up with in a while. I was also able to actually work on some of the flashcards that I had spent so long painstakingly putting together. As I was doing these flashcards, I came across the excess of information that I had stuffed into flashcards from the beginning of my course. I also realized that multiple choice exams, like the one that I was going to be subjected to, 
test you on your ability to pick out the right answer as opposed to your thought process in getting there. I decided to make my flashcards in a similar way. By allocating the closed deletion for the answer and putting any additional information or supplemental images in the extra section of the card, I was able to better stimulate and reinforce neurosynapses. As my course progressed and I went into case-based sessions, I was better able to realize what information had clinical utility and what information was just a fun fact to tell at your next Zoom wedding after party. I started to use the suspend card feature on Anki a lot more frequently to sift through my cards and remove anything that wasn't worth knowing leading up to that first midterm exam. I also realized the value of understanding over memorizing. Luckily for me, my case-based sessions helped me to build a greater understanding of various diseases, their diagnostic criteria, as well as their clinically relevant aspects of their pathogenesis. In preparing for these case-based sessions, Anki was one of the best note-taking applications I've used for searching through my notes to find exactly what I wanted to know. Although there's no hiding that the search engine on Anki is outright miserable, I don't miss having to remember which of the many slide decks on hepatitis viruses talked about their different mechanisms of transmission. Despite the weaknesses of the search bar, no other note-taking application has been able to replicate the searchability that Anki has for its flashcards. Now Anki just has to partner with Google to get their search bar to be able to recognize synonyms. As I approached my first midterm in medical school, I wasn't as consistent with doing the flashcards as I was hoping for. However, I did manage to get in a good number of cards to the point that I did feel prepared for the exam. I also attended a review session held by two alumni of my school and that gave me some great insights that I could use in putting together these flashcards. The first of the two takeaways was that in learning lists of signs and symptoms associated with the disease, you should come up with a picture of a patient that has all of the signs and all of the symptoms, and that will be much easier to remember than trying to learn each sign and symptom independently. Also, since most patients present with a cluster of signs and symptoms, doing it this way will help boost your pattern recognition. The second takeaway was that for rare diseases, you should try and learn the pathognomonic signs. That is the signs that are associated with one disease and no other disease. For example, an individual with abnormally tanned skin, abnormal liver function, and a family history of liver disease, you may suspect that this individual has hereditary hemochromatosis because of that tanned skin as a pathognomonic sign. In my last week of Anki as my standalone note-taking system, I was preparing for my exam. In preparing for my exam, I noticed that there was a significant lack of stress-induced motivation to score well. I was pretty aware that all I needed to do was pass, since at my medical school, a student that passes with a 70% and a student that passes with a 90% are functionally equivalent in terms of career prospects. On exam day, I was relieved to see that the clinically relevant material was what was being tested while the details that I had been late to neglect were not as commonly on my exam. Looking back, I wish I knew what I did now about how much depth is expected in an undergraduate medical education, as well as how to reflect that in the way that I put together flashcards. Weeks later, I got my score back on my midterm exam, and I was pleased to see that I had gotten a 91%, where the class average was an 82%. Quite honestly, my experience with trying to use Anki as my main note-taking app was quite a roller coaster, especially when combined with trying to figure out how I learn best in medical school. It took me some time, but I figured out how I could use Anki as my primary note-taking app and excel. Maybe that medical student from Cambridge had a point. Maybe we'll all someday be using some futuristic note-taking application that consists of flashcards, as opposed to the archaic note-taking systems of yesterday. For myself, I'm going to continue using Anki this way and see where it takes me. If you've gotten this far, let me know how you take your notes and if you're considering switching to Anki as your primary note-taking application. I'm pumping out more great content like this, so be sure to like and subscribe to be the first to see what I've been up to. Thanks team, and I'll see you all in the next one.